Good evening. I'll call the July 11th, 2022 Davie County Commissioners meeting to an order. I'll ask Commissioner Jones to lead us in the invocation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's pray. Father, we come here tonight, uh, Lord, thanking you for your mercy, your grace, and your goodness. Father, we just celebrated the birth of this great nation that you sovereignly placed us in. Father, we thank you for men and women who have bled and died and given the ultimate sacrifice on battlefields that we might be truly free. Lord, tonight we pray for those in our community that serve us in law enforcement, in our fire departments, our EMS, those that educate our children. We thank you for the effort and the commitment and the faithfulness they give to make this an outstanding community to raise a family and to live. So, Lord, tonight we pray for wisdom. We pray for discernment uh, that can only come from you, Father, as we do the business of this great county. Bless those that are here tonight. Give us calmness of speech. And, uh, Father, let our spirit be your spirit. May our words be your words. And, Lord, we will give you praise, glory, and honor for it. We pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go to Ethics and Conflicts Disclosure. Mr. Vogler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160A-86 and the Davie County Board of Commissioners Code of Ethics that was adopted December the 2nd, 2019, I would ask each of you before you adopt the agenda if there's any actual potential or perceived conflicts of interest with respect to any matter on the proposed agenda which will come before the board for a vote at this meeting tonight. If so, please speak up and let the board know before the agenda is adopted. Mr. Chair, seeing no one speak up, I conclude there's no actual potential or perceived conflicts of interest by any board member. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we'll look at the agenda. I'm going to make one change here. Uh, we're going to remove the library board trustee appointment. Other than that, the agenda will roll as is. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A motion to have a second. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Next, we'll go to public comment period. Mr. Fogler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have tonight 10 people that have uh, actually, not 10 now, because some of them have struck their names out. Seven people who have signed up. Uh, I'll go over the public comment guideline for rules uh, before we get started. Uh, each person is desiring a speech during the public comment. We'll sign up, and we've provided the sign-up sheet, and I've got your names. Each speaker shall be allowed a total of three minutes to speech, and so immediately stop when his or her three minutes are up. I will be keeping time. I will let you know when there's two minutes remaining, one minute remaining, 30 seconds remaining, and then what time to stop. Uh, if you're a speaker speaking for an organized group, you're allowed a total of five minutes. Again, I will let you know when there's two minutes remaining, one minute, 30 seconds, and when to stop. Uh, I have been designated by the board to be the timekeeper uh, in this matter, so you'll need to look over this way every so often just see what time you still have left. Uh, speaker shall address the board as a whole and shall not ask any verbal exchange, exchanges back and forth between the board. All comments shall be verbal form. Uh, and you're not allowed to play any recordings or video devices during the comment section. All comments by the speaker shall be limited to subjects that are within the jurisdiction of the Davie County Board of County Commissioners or pertain to matters upon which it may act. Topics which are required that the board hold in closed session, including but not limited to matters involving attorney-client privilege, anticipation or pending litigation, personnel matters, property acquisition, and matters which are made confidence, confidential by law are not required to be topics for discussion at public Comments. Speaker will make all presentations from a podium and shall not be allowed to physically approach the board. Uh, there's a total of 30 minutes allowed for public comments. 
at each county commissioner's meeting upon a motion duly made, the board may extend the 30 minutes. Uh, if time runs out before all persons who have signed up to speak have an opportunity to do so, then those names will be carried over to the next board meeting. So with that said, uh, I will be calling out some names. You will come to the podium. If you would, state your name for the clerk over here uh, so she can have that recorded and then go ahead and start speaking. Uh, first, we have... Uh, okay, first we have is Catherine Dillinger on the dog ordinance. My name is Kathleen Derringer. Shall I start? Yes. I'm a single mom that moved to North Carolina in 2015 and to Davie County in 2018 in order to create a good life and future for my then 10-year-old son. With money I've worked hard for since age 12, I purchased almost seven acres of raw land and built a home in a horse barn. Davie County seemed to be a good place to do so. I also wanted to move somewhere I'd be welcome, have good neighbors, but mostly where my son and I would feel safe. Never did I expect the years of issues I was to have with neighbor dogs. From defecating on my property, to growling at me as I try to go to my mailbox, to having them block the street in front to oncoming cars, to chasing them off my porch even at 4 a.m. in the morning, to the constant barking around the clock, and more. I would even have drivers coming onto my property to yell at me because they assumed the dogs in the street were mine. They even started chasing my horses, to which I finally had to call animal control. Prior, my numerous kind attempts to address this with the neighbors would be met with state statements such as, there is no leash law in Davie County. Well, if the dogs get hit by a car, it will teach our kids a lesson for keeping the gate open. Or if it gets so bad, just shoot at them next time. My calls to animal control were not welcome as I was also reminded by them that there is no leash law. For six months, I was just told to keep taking pictures and to keep calling them. It was an awful experience as each call was met with such disregard and even disdain for even me raising an issue about it. They eventually did take the neighbors to court to deem the dogs a nuisance. I had hoped that this would finally stop the issues. On September 10th of last year, the last thing I remember while riding my horse was these same dogs angrily barking and running my fence line next to my former riding arena that I've spent thousands of dollars now to move closer to my house. This was right before I fell and broke my neck, 10 ribs, collapsed my lung, and had a concussion and a brain bleed. I ended up being in the hospital for weeks with a recovery that is still not complete. I recently called animal control again as once more these same dogs have started getting out weekly. Please, commissioners, put a leash law in place. Establish an ordinance to control loose dogs and constantly barking dogs. It should never have had to come to this. My dream home has not turned out that way, though my property has truly raised the property values in Davie County and both my son and I have added to the economy, economy and have been hardworking good citizens here. It is time for change. Davie County is growing and with more families desiring to move here, Please make it a safe and enjoyable county for us all. Thank you. Rodney Miller, Advance Fire. Rodney Miller, Advance Fire Department. Thank you all for having me. I just got a quick question for you. Uh, I have asked several times since February concerning the funding, and the board asked me to come tonight just to kind of clarify something. We have been footing the utilities for the Station 2, 12-2 now since February, haven't received any funds, and I understand it goes back and forth. What I thought was approved is going back and forth. Uh, I'm not asking for a lease, or the department's not asking for the lease agreement. We know that's coming. We're working on that with y'all now. That's okay. I'm just kind of understand. I just want to understand where the funding's at for the utilities that has not been paid. And I know I've been in touch with Ruff and been in touch with some of y'all. I'm just kind of, I'm at a point where we need to close out of your budget just like y'all do. And I'm kind of, I'm missing some funding that needs to come in. So 
I don't know if any of you have any information that can help me. I, I appreciate it. You know, I'll be more than glad to take that after a while, but I just want to up. Second thing, one quick thing, guys, we got to do something with EMS and the public safety sector in this county. It's bad. And when I say bad, it's getting worse. I don't know whether y'all are seeing it and you're just overlooking it. I promise you now. You're going to hear some more tonight, but it's, it's getting to the point where some decisions have got to be made by somebody. I know we're waiting on you. I know we're waiting on you, manager, to kick in, but I don't know that your problems are going to hold up for that. Uh, we've got things that the guys won't even talk to us now in the field. Nobody wants to talk to nobody. Everybody's scared to death with all these allegations going on. And I don't know who we're at on it. We got to do something, okay? And I know that y'all do your best for it. I hope you do anyway. And I appreciate y'all you do for us, okay? That's all I've got. Thank you. Next is Brad. Is it Friesen? Friesen, that's right. Good evening. I'm Brad Friesen. I'm uh, an attorney at Bell Davis and Pitt. I sent you all a letter in June about the Farmington meat processing zoning matter. And from that, you know, I represent George and Sharon Marthinus who live at 172 Stay Away. George is here. I think he's maybe next on the sign up. Um, at the public hearing last month, George and Sharon addressed you during the, uh, for that matter, and spoke about how the impact of rezoning that track to neighborhood business would have on them. And they talked about how the access to the subject property is limited to a, a narrow, unpaved private easement. Those were points I, in my letter. I've had a chance to talk with Mr. Vogler about that. I'm not going to reiterate all that tonight but I do have two thoughts um, in addition to what I've said before first if the zoning is approved and the longs invest a bunch of money in developing that property further and then two years later the Court of Appeals reverses that decision that would leave them in a in a jam and so tonight there's an opportunity to not go down that road um, they have a good good plan they need a good location and then second uh, y'all love Davie County that's why you're sitting in those seats but I imagine also a reason you ran for office is because you care about good government and making just decisions and in fact the oath of office you each took when you took your seats uh, includes protecting and defending the Constitution and laws of the United States and of North Carolina and sometimes doing that means you have to make an unpopular decision. Sometimes the good decision or the, the good government decision is unpopular. And I think that particular zoning matter may be one of those things where the popular decision is uh, in conflict with the laws. And so I just would urge you to remember your oaths, and I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Next is George Matheson. Mar Marthinus. Marthinus, that's close Marthinus. enough. My name is George Marthinus. I live at 172 Stay Away in Moxville. Our home is off of Farmington Road on a private road. I'm here today to oppose the zoning map amendment at agenda item number nine. I hope when you vote on this zoning map amendment that you consider what the impact is of approving it on the residents of this residential neighborhood. We live on a private road. That is the only access, the only access to the Farmington Meat Store. Proving this amendment will make this private road a public road and have substantial impact on the value of our residential homes in this neighborhood. Thank you for your time. Next sign up is Henry Walker. Henry. Henry Walker, a lifetime farmer, David County. 
<clears throat> I wasn't here last month, but when I read the article in the paper, and that's what I got to go by, it really upset me. I was on the planning board when the agribusiness ordinance was written. It was the first in the state we had nothing to go by. And we worked on it, it was either 12 or 13 months. And I see in reading that newspaper, there's some mistakes in it. We need to go back and get a group of farmers. The planning board is good people, on, but they're not qualified. Our farming is so complex that we need to farm. We need to get a group. I had took it outside of the planning board before. I'm the one that got it done with forming a committee, and we worked on it and tried to get it right as we could. But I'm seeing mistakes there. It hasn't been revisited in 15 years, to my knowledge. And uh, we need to do it. Uh, it's important, and some of the things that are coming up, the way the wording is was not our intention. It's not what we discussed, but the wording is changing it, and it needs to be redone. Also, there's a lot of us farmers, they talk about selling products from other farmers. That's something that's farmers, I mean, I've done it. I buy cattle sometimes, finish a truck trailer. To, I used to be an Asgro seed dealer. The seed come out of Missouri. I mean, you can just... Example, a lot of wineries, this ordinance come up on count of the wineries were starting, and we had, uh, like Don Brown's hydrophonic, there's a few things, and now it's changed. The dairies are gone, the backers are gone, there's so many changes. We need to go back and redo this. There are some other options. And uh, one, I feel like if the county votes against them, they'd have a strong liability or discrimination lawsuit against the county. But they have some other options by the North Carolina General statutes that I want to make the county aware of. Uh, under North Carolina General Statutes, Chapter 54, Subchapter 4, and Subchapter 5 is dealing with cooperative association for farmers. Uh, there's two types. There's a cooperative association and a marketing association that farmers can form. The uh, cooperative association has to have a minimum of five farmers. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm not going to go over And I've got a copy for Mr. Bogger if he'd like to research it. But it's agriculture organization formed under subchapter 4 are required to have its members be producers. And it doesn't say of, it says are, agriculture products. So that would include any agriculture products on that one. The other one is a market association. It only has to have three members to form it. And it's just they got to be in, engaged in production of agriculture products. And both these cooperatives can sell outside the members. They don't have to be a member. They can sell products from other farmers, or handle them, as long as the gross from the others does not exceed the gross from theirs. So I just wanted to make the county aware we need to make some changes. I'd be glad to serve on that committee again and help get a, a group of farmers. And I know some of them say that's Fox watching the hen house. But farmers have a tendency to be honest and uh, dealing with stuff like this, and it needs to be done. And if somebody, I don't know who's going to be the new planning director, but we need to get this done. It's just there's going to be more issues come up, and uh, I just like to see it done. And they talk about private drive. It's really a public drive. That's where all these county roads got started. And every time they pull out a driver, the ones like Mr. Pondex has been on the, anytime it happens on farm, rock quarry school, anything, people line up fussing about traffic, but the houses, it's no different. The outcome, I got Interstate 40 on one, and Little Gobby Road has over 100 vehicles a day, and sometimes we have 70 or 80 trips a day on the whole side and stuff. But thank you for the time, thank you for what you do. Next, <clears throat> next we have Mark Hager on solar farms. <coughs> Mark Hager with Fork City Atkin David County History Museum. And thank you for your time. And as we already heard, and most of you already know, and I've spoken to several of them about our farming dilemmas that we're having. And um, for tonight, the one item that you have on the solar moratorium, um, that is something I know that many parties have been working really hard trying to go through and understand, understand that. But in working with the North Carolina Agricultural uh, Committee on, on the legislative team and with Troxler's office, one of the things that we have run into is that the, the cost inputs that are now taking place in farming 
has grown much farther than even when we anticipated the first part of the solar farm because Orion it's gone um, with the junction project and such but and speaking for us and other farmers looking at it I would invite you all to go back and look at the moratorium to be competitive and for farmers to find that little bit of revenue to hold them out you're restricting them so far in terms of solar farming that you're only going to have an option of we've lost our last dairy farm in this county so farmers looking for other inputs this is one that many counties across this state that I've talked with and across this nation are going going to I would I would ask that you would go back and especially look at um, in the sections on the setbacks are far too restrictive reduce those somewhat and increase the amount of acreage um, that panels can be on from 100 acres closer to 200 acres or they're not going to be competitive enough to even be able to have anyone to look at them and those solar leases I know with us with the museum we were looking at as our nonprofit status as taking revenue from it and with the farmers that I've spoken to in Davie County using it to help them at least for the next year or two until some sort of madness can be taken care of and so the moratorium is fine and it, it's needed but to revisit some of the restrictions and reduce them somewhat that's all we're asking but I appreciate the time and thank you very much Mark Hancock on EMS. Mark Hancock, uh, appreciate the opportunity to address the board. I've got a big concern about the EMS system in this county. Y'all know my past, you know my history. I put my heart and soul in that place for 32 and a half years. I was the director when I retired. It was a well oiled machine. What has happened? The thing has jumped track. It is this it is a mess. Y'all know the problem. I don't. I don't work there. I'm not internal. But I know I have had people come to me, employees, and come to me and visit me and sit and cry like little babies because of the way they're being bullied, intimidated, a hostile work environment, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. If you do not address the problem or problems, you may be seeing the little men in the black robes in the courthouse or the state office of EMS may be here knocking on your door wanting to do an investigation. I'm telling you, it is a service. What has been failed is the citizens and the taxpayers of this county. That is a delivery system for pre-hospital professional care for the sick and injured. I don't think it's quite there. It can get there, but you're going to have to have a lot of help. Uh, a lot of the people has been drugged through the mud employees that are there now and employees that have retired the SBI was called in it will be interesting to find out what that's about I bet you it'd be unfound so I ask you to please to please I'm coming to you as a taxpayer I pay my fair share of taxes I run a business James, you, your dad handed you a business. You took that business with compassion and heart, and you growed it. And look what you've got now. With good employees and dedicated leadership. Terry, you're a businessman. Richard, you're a businessman. Mark, y'all know, you know firsthand what EMS is about. I think it's safe to say that EMS give you a better quality of life. So y'all need to think about this. So if you're sick, injured, laying in the ditch, wrapped around a telephone pole, 
Are you going to have somebody competent coming to get you that knows what's going on? And here's the thing. Please fix the problem. I know it's probably complex, but you can do it. I got faith in you. So please do it. Thank you. Mr. Chair, that's the last individual who signed up. All right, next we'll move to our public hearings. Uh, first one's a zone tax amendment 2022-01, the solar facility. I'll call it Mr. Adam Barr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Before you tonight is zoning map amendment 2022-01, the purpose of which is to consider changes to the requirements for solar energy generating facilities, specifically sections 155.130.29, conditions for solar energy facilities, and 155.151, special purpose district. At your directive, the planning board began reviewing the requirements for solar farms at the beginning of 2021. The Planning Board received public comment on the existing solar regulations and formed a subcommittee for deeper review and to provide regular updates. In December 2021, the Planning Board made a unanimous recommendation of proposed changes for the solar regulations. Uh, I, I would be happy to, to go over some of the, the highlights of it if you, if you wish. I know you've had quite a bit of time to look over this. We've kind of talked about it for many months, so uh, unless you feel absolutely necessary to kind of go over those then uh tonight i think the board should consider either approval approval with changes denial or deferment of the amendment and i'd be happy to answer any other questions or kind of go over those highlights if, if you uh need as well i do want to say also present tonight is our planning board chairman mary Wright, who can kind of further speak to the planning board work and proposals Does anyone have any questions? Here. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to update you. Um, as Adam mentioned, I'm the chairman of the Davie County Planning Board. Several of the Davie County Planning Board members are also here this evening. And at your request to revisit the ordinance, uh, we have the did the rewrite that's in front of you. We also provided in December of 2021 an executive summary because we learned more than we expected to learn as a result of that. And so I'm here tonight to give an update on two points in the executive summary. The first is what we learned on decommissioning costs, and the second is what we learned about the LLC structure and the business structure of the solar facility owners. Um, the executive summary statement that we put together, we still stand by that, and that's unanimous across the planning board which is that further solar in Davie County is not beneficial and gives us substantial financial risk. Um, decommissioning costs, as an example, we expected we might get $2 million of a revenue stream from Ratledge and Junction Road. But, and, um, but the decommissioning costs using Duke Energy's numbers for the eight facilities we have in place, which total over 600 acres, comes to $9 million. We did finally, two weeks ago, get the total value of the two warranty guarantee bonds, and that's $140,000. So two million and 140 doesn't even come close to offsetting the nine million. What we would ask is that a risk benefit analysis be done by the county to make sure that we know exactly what that math is at end of life for solar. Uh, the second question really is solar ownership, and that's fairly questionable. Um, as a matter of fact, we believe it's a facade. We don't even believe it's reality. Two of the eight that we have in place today have already issued articles of dissolution with the North Carolina Secretary of State, Crawford Road and Daniel Road. So we have no idea how they're going to be maintained, how it's going to be paid for, or who's gonna own the end of life commissioning costs. Davie County has eight approved solar facilities. They've changed ownership over 50 times. Every single one of them has turned over at least one time. 
all eight of the eight approved solar facilities are limited liability corporations, limited liability corps. Those are not the same as an S corp, a C corp, or a corporation. They're not in business to make money. They've got that liability coverage just to protect their liability. So the company ownership, the real concern with the company ownership is that it creates a huge lack of confidence with respect to their motives and their long-term commitment to Davie County. Um, the John Locke Foundation, and I brought copies for you uh, also tonight, I'll hand these out, put together information from the North Carolina Department of Revenue in 2015 for those companies that received a tax credit as a result of this. Over half of the top 86 companies who invested in the LLCs were financial institutions and insurance companies. Of the five decommissioned companies, of the five decommissioning contracts that we've viewed, we've been able to see the ownership only on three. The first three, Moxville, Daniel, and Toprak, were already in place before the county created an ordinance. So we had five left. We can only see contracts for three. Of the three, those three, the landowner is responsible for the decommissioning costs. For 50 acres decommissioning costs, using Duke Energy's numbers, totals $575,000. Now, is the landowner really going to pony that money up, especially if it comes to fruition in less than the 20 or 30 years that it's expected? So our conclusion uh, to you, and we respectfully just ask you to consider the financial impact to the county, but that tenuous ownership coupled with um, the exorbitant decommissioning costs gives substantial risk, financial risk, to the county, to the landowners, and to the taxpayers. So should you decide to approve more solar projects, we suggest that the county commit, can, can complete a risk-benefit analysis and define a plan by which we cover these costs. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. In terms of the risk-benefit analysis, are, are, are you asking us to work on the current projects that are in place to kind of estimate uh, the decommissioning cost and the, and, and the cost of the county? Are you, are you asking us to deal with those on a project-by-project -project basis as they come to us in the future? Both. Good question. Thank you. Really both. I think we need to validate the $9 million. That's the number that Duke Energy has using the inflationary component that's been added to it. And that's $9 million because it's $115,000 per megawatt. We're just short of 80 megawatts across the county that's been installed on the 660 acres. But we think for any other project, should you decide to adopt the ordinance that's before you, we also recommend a, a risk-benefit analysis done before anything's approved. I think you, I, I agree with you 110% uh, on that. I guess my question to you is this, very specific. Are you asking us to defer or continue with the moratorium until we do this prior to approving what you're bringing to us tonight? Yeah, I think that obviously is your decision. We're a recommending board, but the planning board the Davie County Planning Board feels very strongly that we have enough solar in Davie County. However, we also respect that this is your decision, not our decision. Well, you are already approved the ordinance. We have yeah. approved, yes, the we have approved the ordinance that we are recommending to you. Okay. Correct. Right. Thank you. Correct. Did that answer your question, Mr. Jones? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer it myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> Any other questions? The information you got from Duke Energy on the decommissioning, is that, uh, is that a published paper or where did you get that? I'm sorry, Commissioner Reniger, could you speak into the microphone? Sorry. The, um, the cost to decommission a plant that you got from Duke Energy, is that, um, I know you got it from Duke Energy, but is that, publicly available or it is it is I can get that for you if you'd like it okay I, I will say at this point in time in the erratic economy that we're in 
I don't know that spending money on that study at this very moment would be that profitable because things are changing daily. So I understand why you're asking, but I don't know that that would really have any staying power. We weren't looking for a study. We were just looking for a financial risk-benefit analysis. Finance organizations do that yeah, but I, you know, frequently. It's, it's, it's probably not going to hold water for very long, is what I'm saying, in this, with the way everything is right now. And, I, you know, I, I don't know how long that that would stay true, yeah. you know. <clears throat> I think the, the concern is that we don't know what's at risk with the two locations that have already filed articles of dissolution, but you have a copy in your package that shows um, Moxville, Daniel, and Toprak, mm -hmm. and that's about 170, 180 acres that we already have filed articles of dissolution on for two of the facilities, and so what we are basically saying is, how are we going to deal with that? Do we know? And shouldn't we know? Because it'll either be the landowner, the solar developer, which we cannot track down, or the county, or a federal super fund for cleanup. And we don't know which. Okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions for uh, Ms. Wright or uh, Mr. Barr? Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is a public hearing, so I will ask Mr. Vogler to um, read us the rules of engagement, please. Okay. The vice chair has announced this is the day and hour of the public hearing pursuant to Chapter 160D of the General Statutes of North Carolina, also Chapter 155 of the Davie County Code and Ordinance, of an amendment to the zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan regarding solar energy generating facilities in code section 155, 125, 155, 130.29, and 155.151. It has been duly Due notice has been given pursuant to the requirements of North Carolina General Statutes and Davie County Code and Ordinance by way of due publication of notice of the public hearing and a newspaper general circulation in Davie County is required. The clerk to the board is attached to the affidavit showing publication of said in said paper. I would ask all who wish to come to comment at this public hearing to come forward to the podium, state your full name for the board, and then comment on the proposal. Good evening. Uh, my name is Andy Backus. I live on Cornwallis Drive in the Pudding Ridge neighborhood. I'm pleased to have been involved in studying the county's solar policy as a member of the Davie County Planning Board. As Miriam said, five of us are here tonight. I believe our proposed ordinance text accomplishes uh, the goal of consistency, predictability, and transparency in our government, and I advocate for the commissioner's approval of it with the direction to add it to the Davie County Comprehensive Plan. Uh, Miriam just spoke about the multiple changes in ownership of the eight solar projects the commissioners have approved for the county, and she gave you the data on the decommissioning risk. I won't rehash that except to state that as a business person who routinely evaluates risk-benefit analysis, there must at minimum be some decommissioning liability protections in our solar approval procedures to safeguard the county's citizens and taxpayers. I do want to use my time to update you on our own experience at Pudding Ridge to provide a practical example of what's happening in our county and, and bring the data to life, if you will. As most of you know, my wife Amy served as president of the Pudding Ridge Homeowners Association last year, and we opposed the Pudding Ridge Solar Project. During development in the zoning application process, the original, de original developer, Bird's Eye Energy, sold themselves with assurances that they would be a good neighbor and they would work with us on buffer zones and so forth. And to be fair, when they were involved, they did. But now, before the project is, e is even built, I understand that the project is on, on its third owner. Repeated attempts, including today, to connect with anyone with knowledge or decision-making authority regarding the project have been unsuccessful. The point is, from a citizen's perspective, Despite all the goodwill and promises during the rezoning application process, what is happening in practice, even just one year removed from zoning approval, is not matching up. The Pudding Ridge Homeowners Association, who filled the room when the issue was on the 
agenda for the commissioners today has no idea what is happening with the project. So that is just one example of what is happening in practice with these solar development ownership arrangements. Again, I am pleased to have been involved with Davie County solution in the form of the proposed new solar ordinance, and I urge you to adopt it. Thank you. Can, can I ask Mr. Back a quick question? What's the acreage of the, of the proposed project out there? I, I, I don't recall off the top of my head, but I think it's 75? 75? Okay. 50 acres, I think. 50? 50 or 50, okay. 50. Okay. 50. <coughs> Any more questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to come and comment, please come to the podium. And state your name for the board so that we've got that on the record. <coughs> My name is Nick's Logic. Uh, we own a, my wife and I own a farm on uh, Junction Road. We were in the middle of that fiasco a couple of years ago that started up. And I would like to just acknowledge the planning board has done a wonderful job of digging into some of the details associated with these, I guess, these Bernie Madoff kind of deals. This solar farm business, it's not a farm it's an industrial wasteland i did my best to make my piece davy county be a better place if the commissioners to me don't institute a permanent moratorium on solar farms you're doing a, dis, uh, a disservice to the existing residents of davy county and any future people who want to come here and make it a fine place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Herb Eckerlin, Dr. Eckerlin. I'm an emeritus professor of NC State Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. I've been a proponent of solar energy for many years. In 1980, I orchestrated the design and construction of the NCSU Solar House. The whole Solar House was built for research, demonstration, and public education purposes. The house was open for 30 years. Thousands of North Carolinians went through the house and educated themselves on solar energy. The house today serves as a research lab for our graduate students. In 1987, because the house was located in Raleigh, I wanted to extend the solar information to the people of the state and founded the NC State NC Solar Center. That would extend the benefits across the state. Now, solar energy systems take three forms. They can be used to space heat a house called passive solar. They can be used to uh, heat water and they can be used to protect and generate electricity. The one thing that these systems all have in common, they're all different, different technology, but what they have in common is they are all dependent upon a backup. Now we're here today to talk about solar farms. I've contacted by people from all over the country about this problem, county commissioners, and public citizens. Solar electricity is very inefficient. It requires 75 times more land than a conventional power plant for a per megawatt hour. All solar developers are LLCs. We've heard that mentioned earlier today. That means that the solar developer and the investors cannot be held personally responsible for their business debts and liabilities. They're shielded. I don't know about you, but that bothers me, even as a solar proponent. Another unknown fact is solar developers sell their interest in the solar farms in three years. Why should you commit a county, your county, 
for 30 years with someone who's gone in three. What are you as county commissioners going to do when the solar developer walks away from the solar farm without notice? What are you as county commissioners going to do when the solar developer sells his solar farm to someone who knows nothing about solar but is in the business only for tax credits? These are some things that you need to think about. Even as I, as a solar proponent, I'm concerned about these issues. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm Dr. Bonnie Grigsby. I represent a contingency across the county that stand with the planning board's unanimous conclusion Davie County has enough solar. I have two main points tonight. Thank you for being forward thinking by updating our solar ordinance. And two, financial obligations cannot be recovered from solar developers after the first panel is in the ground. The business model of industrial solar, as you know, is energies generated, money's made, lasts about 25 years at best, and then the business is over. No more money, but now the real expense begins to restore the property to fertile farmland. This is obviously no small matter as our North Carolina General Assembly is requir has required the Department of Environmental Quality to study financial, solar financial obligation. It's a 51-page summary dated March of 2022. An example from the study, the cost to recycle a single solar panel is $25 to $30 per panel. That's expense, not profit. Their study only has data on our first four facilities. Half of our facilities, their number, 150,000 panels are in the ground in Davie County. That's a total expense of four to four and a half million dollars for half our facilities to be recycling panels. That does not include land restoration and more. If our state legislators thought that financial assurance at decommissioning was worthy of study, I'd say that's a strong signal there's a problem that needs to be addressed and you're addressing it. My second main point, financial obligations cannot be recovered from developers after construction. Solar developers have told us you'll make money using salvage values at decommissioning, thus Davie County does not need financial money to set aside. Currently, as you heard, we have two bonds for eight facilities. Because we have let developers tell us what we, what we needed, this new ordinance lets us tell them. On page 16 of this document regarding financial models, I quote, each facility is developed by a unique set of investors that form an LLC. The financial model and financing are established in the early stages of facility construction and would be difficult to change or revise to include financial assurance funding after construction is complete. So if solar developers are wrong and we don't make money at decommissioning and we didn't require a bond or a certified check to cover the upfront costs, the LLC is under no obligation. Since this is obvious to smart counties like ours, to, if this, this is obvious, smart counties like ours will require stringent financial commitments before considering industrial solar. So in conclusion, knowing that our state is concerned with how decommissioning is going to be funded, knowing anything they put in place will take years to implement, knowing that our, immediate, our needs are immediate, we are grateful that you are forward thinking. You directed the planning board in a monumental task then they developed an updated ordinance and updated solar comprehensive plan language, a fine document. Not perfect, but a fine starting point and one that we advocate to put into place to start protecting our county. By passing these documents tonight, you will pr protect future generations from the costly mistakes of industrial solar development. Thank you. Can I answer any questions for you, Commissioners? Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Grisby? 
Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to comment at this public hearing? If so, come forward. Mr. Chair, seeing no one come forward, I would now turn the public hearing back over to you as board, board chair to close the public comment section of this public hearing. Provide the board the opportunity to discuss among yourselves what, if any, action you wish to take with the cars. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, anybody has any discussion points or considerations you want to discuss here? I would just like to point out something. I, mean, I appreciate all the work that's been done, and I appreciate everything that's been said. But um, I also want to reiterate something I have said before, that the use of farmland for a solar farm is not the only terrible use of farmland in this county. So the next time that someone wants to cover up a large area of farmland with concrete and warehouses I hope that you come and support that issue as well and we always have approved <coughs> these before based on landowners rights well that kind of takes the landowners rights out of the equation with this particular idea but and also I would love to see you come alongside Miss Derringer and support her plea for us to have a leash law and allow her to have peaceful living at her house as well. I appreciate you coming, but I sure would like to see you come every time we have an issue like this. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, yes, sir. I have one that I would like to make. I, it always concerns me when we're taking rights away from our farmers, especially those that are getting older and no longer are able to farm. Uh, by taking away these rights, we narrow what they can do with their land in order to be able to live out the rest of their life in comfort. We're getting to the point where the only thing that we're going to be allowing would be residential development or industrial development. And while industrial is, is a good thing, residential is expensive for the taxpayers of the county because every time a house is built in this county, your taxes go up a little bit. Uh, we need to keep that in mind. And uh, that's my biggest concern on this is the rights of the uh, farm owners. Any other, any other comments or concerns? I would just say that um, I would echo what Mr. Poindexter, Commissioner Poindexter is saying about the rights of the farm owners or farmers, but when I look at this um, globally, and we've taken a long time to look at this, and I absolutely appreciate everything the planning board has done. Uh, Y'all did a great job. Uh, the long-term benefits of solar, I just do, don't see it for Davie County. And um, for the greater good, I, I just don't see how we need any more solar farms in Davie County at this point. If the science gets refined and it becomes a better proposition or more efficient then we can revisit it but right now I just don't see it being viable um, beyond what we have thank you mr. chairman I, I would just say this um, I appreciate the work that the planning board did I, th I think I would like to see us as a county um, in a unique way work with our farmers, especially our long-term landowners, uh, farmers, whoever they might be, to, to uh, work through our legislators to, to do some levels of creative issues as it relates to taxes uh, and property taxes on property that has been held, um, in some cases, for generations. Uh, uh, to allow uh, these landowners the ability to stay on their property and uh, not force them into, uh, into a, a situation where they have to sell to developers, they have to sell uh, to large solar uh, entities. Uh, I think there are ways that, that we could do that. Uh, I think we've got to think outside the box, but um, I agree with uh, Vice Chairman Reniger that I, I, I don't believe uh, that 
the long term issue of, of large solar farms is a benefit to any to to uh, the citizens of Davie County. Uh, now, I you know, or have we closed the public hearing? We have. I would make a motion to approve, but I would say this. Um, um, I started to ask Ms. Wright and Mr. Barr the issue of the 100 acres versus 75 or 50 acres. Um, um, I, I think let's move with this. It's a good step, as everyone has said, but we may have to revisit this. Uh, um, after a year or so, relook at things. But, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to to approve uh, the recommendation of the planning board. I have a motion to approve the planning board's recommendations. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Four one passes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll move to our second public hearing, Motorsports Fund Grant Agreement. I'll call on Mr. Robin West. Ms. Robin West, excuse me. Good evening. Uh, earlier this year, the North Carolina Department of Commerce announced a mo motorsports grant fund uh, that was made available through the Motorsports Relief Fund. This fund was established by the North Carolina General Assembly in the most recently passed state budget in the past fiscal year. This fund was aimed to offset the negative economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic to support safe reopening and aid planned expansions or upgrades that have been delayed by the pandemic. Um, High Performance Holdings LLC, uh, which is Farmington Dragway, made an application with the assistance of Davie Economic Development Commission in February to Commerce for this grant. So uh, to date, we have gotten two grants that were awarded to Davie County through Commerce. The first is for $485,000. The second is for $22,654. Uh, the additional amount was due to uh, some additional amount of gate uh, entries provided by Farmington Dragway. So we got the, the second grant for the smaller amount. So High Performance Holdings LLC will be the county sub-recipient for this grant and a separate contract is requested to be approved in your information tonight. We are allowed to withhold 10% for grant administration. This would cover our expense for uh, grant reporting. Uh, this is an extensive uh, grant that requires monthly reporting. It's pretty extensive. Uh, contract preparation review, as well as uh, reviewing the uh, company's uh, costs for, for reimbursement. So this would be a re reimbursement-based grant. So the company would spend the money uh, propose reimbursement amounts for the amount of their costs. We review those to make sure they're in compliance with the grants as required through North Carolina Commerce. This is actually a flow through grant from the federal government. So we would review those and then reimburse the company if it was approved. So before you tonight, we have two grant agreements between Davie County and the North Carolina Department of Commerce, Commerce as well as a single agreement between the county and High Performance Holdings LLC. In conjunction with the agreement, we have to ensure that these grants get spent for the purpose for which they're intended and as the matter prescribed by statute, as well as making sure that all improvements comply with applicable laws and zoning requirements. So the total amount that we would be uh, holding back for administration is a little over $50,000. But all of that information is before you and included in your, in your agenda packet tonight. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, if I can, I, I just wanted to add that <clears throat> this is a non-conforming use under our zoning codes, um, the Farmington Dragway, meaning they cannot expand the use of the property. They're sort of entitled to renovate and keep what's there up to standard, and that's what will be done with this grant. It will not be used to expand the speedway. 
Okay. We were sure to include in the grant agreement that we have between the county and high performance holdings to include that language that everything would be within, you know, zoning regulations. And the money is expended on a per project basis. In other words, they have to they have to come to us with money that they have spent. Absolutely, yes, and they have to follow. The, we got over the weekend a lot of guidance from uh, the North Carolina Pandemic Recovery Office uh, that works with commerce for this uh, as far as, you know, the way they have to bid the job, spend the money, and that kind of thing, and we'll be sharing it with the company if we approve the contract. They, but we yes. included that all in the agreement. They actually can't spend money until we've approved that for expenditure and make sure it, the standards have been followed for the award of the contracts. Yeah, that's it, unless you all had any more questions. Yeah, anybody have any questions for Ron? Thanks. Thank you. Chair has announced this today and now the public hearing on the Motor Sports Fund grant agreement with the sub grantee agreement with High Performance Holdings LLC in Davie County and also the two grants with North Carolina Department of Commerce. There's been due notice given pursuant to the requirements of North Carolina General Statutes, Davie County Code by way of publication of notice in the public no, in a public newspaper of the public hearing with general circulation in David County is required by law. The clerk to the board has attached an affidavit showing publication of this notice. I would ask all who wish to comment at this public hearing to come forward to the podium, state your name for the board, and then comment on the proposal. Chair, see no one come Oh, okay, okay. coming from the back. I'm sorry. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Buck Burkhart. Um, I've been a small business owner here in Davie County for 20 years with High Performance Holdings. Um, we have employed a lot of people out of Davie County. We've used the fire department, the EMS, and we are proud that North Carolina has recognized us as a necessary motorsports company in North Carolina. I can guarantee you personally, all funds are gonna go for safety. We're gonna redo the track as far as the asphalt, return lanes where potholes are and so forth. The administration costs are gonna be minimal to the county. Both contracts are close to 200 to $270,000 each. So again, administration costs are gonna be minimal I think that Davie County would be able to put a lot of that money into their account after it's all said and done. So with that being said, I ask that you approve this grant. Thank you. I apologize for not seeing you come forward too. <laughs> okay. Anyone else who wishes to come forward and speak, come to the podium. Mr. Chair, now seeing no one come forward to the podium, I would turn the public hearing back over to you as board chair to close the public comment section of the public hearing and then to turn the matter back over to the board for the opportunity to discuss among yourselves what, if any, action you wish to take with regards to this matter at this time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Roger. Does the board have any discussions or questions or concerns? To... All right. Do I have anyone wants to make a motion to approve or deny? I would make that motion. I have a motion to approve. A second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any other discussion? Call for the vote. All in favor? Five. Oh, it is approved. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, we'll move to our consent agenda for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Chairman, you pulled item three. I did. Yes, sir. I did. I may. Okay. Have a motion and a second on the consent agenda. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. So we'll go to old business. Uh, Farmington Meat Processing LLC. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to defer until uh, our September meeting. Okay. I have a motion to defer till September meeting. I have a second. 
Second. Okay, a motion and a second. All in favor to defer. Five oh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, under the consent agenda, did uh, we want to ask Mr. Paul Moore if he had anything to say about Recreation Month? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Mr. Moore, you want to come up here and get in front of everybody? <laughs> How will time you have 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make this. Uh, I'll be short and be seated. Uh, yes, this is <laughs> this is National uh, Parks and Recreation Month for uh, our national association, and we ask all in our community that uh, to to go out and explore uh, the undis undiscovered assets within our park, uh, within our community and recreation centers. Uh, all across the county and if you uh, take pictures share stories be sure to ha hashtag that with with uh, we rise up uh, for uh, National Recreation Parks Month uh, we started off our July uh, July 2nd with um, our biggest event uh, at our park yet we had over 10,000 plus for our independent celebration uh, got hairy there at the end with weather I uh, do want to um, thank uh, and give kudos to our fire EMS, our fire marshal service, and my staff for uh, uh, quick communications all within about 15 or 16 minutes. Uh, was quite remarkable uh, to go into emergency prep mode. Uh, luckily, we didn't have to go green on all that, but uh, to get uh, uh, contractors moved and, and, and safety uh, protocols in place was quite remarkable. So thank you for uh, our, our county staff, uh, EMS, fire, EMS, sheriff's department for all that they do. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> all right. We'll go back around. Now we'll be at new business. Is there any new business for us this evening? Okay, seeing none. County manager report. Mr. Ruffin. Okay, I only have one item, Mr. Chairman, and that comes actually from Commissioner Poindexter. Um, actually, I have two items, I'm sorry. Um, August 23rd is um, former Mayor and Dr. Slate's 100th birthday. And so I just wanted uh, the board to know we'll be honoring him that night with a resolution. Uh, Commissioner Poindexter has uh, suggested that uh, the board proclaim the 23rd as as Dr. Slate Day, we'll, we'll get the official name correctly and everything, uh, but that will be on your August 1st agenda. He's healthy, I understand, so we'll see if we can't have him here to recognize him that night. Um, Ed handed me um, this uh, before we met, but Robert Eugene Brown and wife, Lisa Ann Brown, have petitioned the Board of Commissioners in Davie County and the Board of Commissioners in the town of Moxville to enter into a mutual agreement to assign zoning jurisdiction over their property consisting of 98 acres of land located in Davie County um, to the zoning jurisdiction of Davie County. It's currently divided between the town of Moxville and Davie County. Um, I have a, a resolution. I'm not asking them to approve it, are we, Ed? No, that would have to be next month. Right. Just we just need a poll as to whether or not they're willing to do to be that. sure you're okay to assume the full zoning jurisdiction uh, for this parcel of uh, property uh, that's coming from the town of Moxville is asking you to do that as well. So any objections? You need more information? How, how much? Start. Yes. How much is in the county? How much is in the town looking to see I know it's um, split it's 98 acres total I don't think I see um, I don't, we can I don't get see, more information yeah. on that prior to the August meeting doesn't Hank Van, we'll Hank Van, Van Hoy represents the petitioners and I don't remember him saying how much is in the county and how much is in the town other than the fact that he said the book of it's in the county Okay. Yeah. We've got the um, the notations in the registered deeds office so we can get that information yep. for you. Just wanted you to know, Miss Siri had no objections. But but given that's coming from the town, has anything been presented on this land for rezoning up to this point or they're just thinking about it? 
they have been polled and my understanding is they're going to present it to their August meeting uh, in which case they will are saying at this point in time that they're going to request that it be turned over to the county the they will pass a resolution then we would pass a resolution and then it had to have a zoning petition and we'd have to go through the the formal process of rezoning anything uh, if there was be anything rezoned it's not uh, we're told it's not uh, supposedly a controversial request so the town of Moxville would have to make the formal mm -hmm. they would have to make a formal request to us after they pass the resolution yes they they do they meet prior to that they actually they actually I'm not sure how they're going to do that they talked about a special meeting they talked about about putting on the August meeting, which would be after our meeting, yes. which means then it would be September. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what they do on a, on their timing. And so you'll get us copies of this resolution okay. at, at the appropriate time. As well as yeah. the acreage, yes. Yeah. We'll get that for you. Okay. So that's, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. We'll be on our August 1 agenda. Okay. Or September agenda, depending on when on when they town does August. theirs. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ruffin. Next, I'll move to Commissioner's comments. Ladies first, Mr. Finney. I'll be short and sweet. I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. I hope you will come back again when we have other events going on, whether they um, are close to your home or not, that you'll come and participate in government and learn more about what we're doing and just hope everyone continues to have a wonderful summer. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank everyone for being here. You're the reason this is a great county to live in. Uh, God has blessed us in mighty and wonderful ways, but you guys uh, are the manifestation of God's blessings. And uh, I thank you each for being here. Uh, real quickly, I want to say thank you to the North Carolina legislature, uh, Representative Howard, uh, Senator Kravick, uh, Senator Jarvis, uh, for proposing a, uh, a good budget. Uh, thank, thank the governor for today signing that budget, setting aside political differences. Um, that budget represents a tremendous investment in Davie County. Uh, as it relates to economic development and um, infrastructure and so I just uh, I want to thank publicly those folks for um, really doing a great job for us in Raleigh and uh, again thank each of you for being here okay. I too would like to thank everybody for coming out tonight it is wonderful to look out and see a, a crowd in the seats, filling the seats. Um, hope you'll come back again next month and the next month and the next month. Um, also, I'd like to thank all our uh, county employees. Um, they don't get thanked enough at times uh, for the wonderful job that they do. And also the emergency people in this county, the fire department, the sheriff's department, the EMS, uh, would like to say thank you to all those. and. Hope to see you again next month. Mr. Reniger. I'd like to thank everyone for being here. It's good to see the room full. And um, again, I want to thank the planning board again for all their work on the solar ordinance. Um, again, it's not perfect, but it is a tremendous step, and I thank you for that. I hope uh, everyone continues to enjoy the summer and uh, come back next month. Thank you. I'll... Uh, I'll I'll praise the rain we got this past week finally uh, it's been pretty brutal uh, for farmers and agribusiness and people like me to work outside but uh, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight um, uh, I too want to thank the uh, planning board I apologize I had a nosebleed it wasn't like I was trying to get away from everybody um, I appreciate all the work they've done um, and this is not easy uh, I really appreciate uh, again all the hours and all their time uh, and again, th this is, may not be perfect, but uh, it's a work in progress, and, and we're trying to do the right thing. Um, we're trying to we're trying to protect landowners' rights, but we're also trying to protect everyone else's rights too. Uh, and uh, and again, we're all making hard decisions up here on this board, but I think uh, I think we're working the right the right direction there. So.
with that, I'll close Mr. Comment. Mr. Chairman, can I add one sure. thing, just one quick thing, uh, as it relates to the budget? Um, one of the things that um, we we need to do in Davie County to is, I think, really to honor those that um, that farm, uh, and and there's a group here that's working on that. Benita has worked closely with them, Richard, some others. But I think one of the things we need to do. Uh, is and and I would like to see us as commissioners uh, uh, work to take a first step toward this ag, ag center, uh, and that first step would be to to help them find a way through Commissioner Troxler, uh, through the budget process at the state level, to try to find some money to begin stage one of that. And so um, I just you know if we can get that in the minutes. I'd like to see us talk, all of us begin to talk uh, to see how that would look uh, while the state uh, is being very generous. <laughs> and so we don't need to let that go. I think we need to maybe be more aggressive and push towards uh, getting that started. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. With that, I'll close Commissioner comments. I'll move into a closed session. <clears throat> Closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A6 to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee or to hear or investigate a complaint, charge, or grievance by or against a public officer or employee. I have a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? We are in closed session. Thank you. Back in open session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, sir.